Hey everyone, Joe for jazbeeshobbyland.com coming at you with a full case of 2018 Bowman Baseball 12 box pick your team number three from jazbeeshobbyland.com. A big thank you to all these people for filling this up on a Saturday night. We also fill, and there's Adam. Congrats to Adam for winning that Angel Spot random. Jason Gay with double last spot mojo getting my Dodgers and the Phillies at the same time to finish off this break. And there's everybody else. Thanks for joining us. Um, the promo is full. This is one of the last breaks that I had to fill before the before we can give away fifteen hundred dollars of break credit. So we'll be doing that uh, giveaway money giveaway randomizer after this break, which will be about an hour and a half or so. So big thanks to everybody for filling up that promo. We did it with plenty of time to spare too. So thank you. Now, this is a long break, so we'll be talking about a lot of things. Usually, I, li I like to keep the uh, the conversation sports-specific, but since this break takes so GD long, um, we can talk about other stuff, too. We were talking a little, uh, a little baseball, or a little basketball off-camera. We'll save this Series 2 poster for a future giveaway. We're talking a little basketball. Talk some baseball. Oh, there's Jason G. He's here. One of the more, I guess, a more uh, on-topic thing right now, or more uh, current event thing right now, is the Rockets, who are leading for a good good chunk of the game, minus Chris Paul. And I was telling everybody, man, you got to watch that third quarter. That's when that's when you'll know who's going to win or lose. And there you go. You had you had the. Uh, yeah, the Golden State Warriors come out firing after the, in the second quarter, or the third quarter in the second half. And now they're leading 109-81. I had a, I had a penny on a – put a little bit – sprinkled a little bit on the on the Rockets today. That plus 12 for the Rockets seemed pretty pretty high, but it looks like, looks like uh, Golden State is going to cover pretty easily. No, they're gas now. You know, Raz Kid saying everyone slammed Houston fourth quarter because of the slump. But boom, yeah, they're gassed. The only the Rockets' only chance, the Rockets' only chance was to uh, was to try to try to just out hustle them for three quarters and maybe hang on at the end. But but that plan's not going to work. They may as well just rest up and try to win it at home in the. Uh, in game seven and another two game sevens, which Arthur thinks is rigged. I don't know if it's rigged. Not not in this day and age. I don't. Were there any bad call? I mean, Rockets are just getting destroyed. Uh, you can't rig that. Uh, Rich. Uh, oh, nice. I was wondering when you were gonna see it. I was like, Rich usually doesn't go to bed this early. I thought he'd be up at some point. Nice, Jason. What's up, jo Joey and Boris? Are gonna watch the replay tomorrow. All right. Well, it's a long break. There you go. Uh, well, I mean, yeah, NBA wants more money, but how do you rig this? You you tell Houston to, you tell Golden State you better win this one. I mean, hard to rig this one. All right. Uh, as you know by now, no paper ships in this. Uh, if you're watching the replay on YouTube and you just want to see the hits, just click uh, click the letter L, I think. You can fast forward through it 10 seconds at a time, and you'll get through the break really quickly. So who tells me? Who tells them? So what? At, at, at this, in the half, at halftime, someone from the NBA goes to the locker room and says, Hey, Mike, Mike D'Antoni, and... How does I just want to know how that works? I don't think it's rigged, Arthur. How do you tell what happens? Adam Silver comes into the locker room. Hey, you guys, listen. We need a game seven. It's good for the NBA. So I want you to throw up some lazy shots. Mike D'Antoni, stop coaching. Everyone else on the Rockets, throw up some lazy shots. Even though you can beat the Warriors without Chris Paul. How does that work? Oh, Adam Silver during timeouts, he goes up to, he whispers into Mike D'Antoni's ear, hey, I know you can win this one without Chris Paul. 
No, I don't think that. You can't. They're, they're, they quit playing because they're getting destroyed by a superior team. That's why they quit playing. That's what it is. They're just gassed. Christian Pash for the Braves. That's a nice one for DMAC. I think they're just gassed. Well, they, they Warriors covered a long time ago. It's not like the it's not like the Rockets were trying to win and then still cover. If they're down by like twenty some odd points, that's a little obvious. It's, they didn't. They did not go to point shaving school. Yeah, that's a great prospect right there too. Lee's like that's a good auto. JP Crawford. And look at this. Gold shimmer. Like Steph Curry shimmying. There's Scott Kingery. Nice. 39 out of 50. And that goes to Jason. That card is gold. Gold, I tell you. There's a Vlad Guerrero that'll go to you, Lee. So Lee, how soon, how soon do you think, uh, do you think Vlad Guerrero gets called up? Would it be, uh, would it be once they trade Josh Donaldson for a bag of baseballs? Uh, Luke Graffs, I'm trying not to think about that game, man. What do I think about Carius and his mistakes. I'm a Liverpool supporter, folks, and the Champions League match versus Real Madrid was today. There's Jordan Hicks out of 250. Listen. Oh, September at the earliest? I think it's as, as soon as they trade Josh Donaldson. I think they're going to call him up. August. Uh, as, for, as for Liverpool, I mean, what are you going to do? It was going to be hard enough for them to beat Real Madrid anyway. And so those mistakes really didn't help. I mean, you can you can uh, clearly attribute two goals to him, and losing Mohamed Salah at the beginning of the match and within the first thirty minutes, you know the Liverpool is already shorthanded, and so that was going to be that was going to be a tough one. So. What are you going to do? <laughs> yeah, I was definitely salty at the beginning of the day. That's just because the, the the match was just maybe an hour old. <laughs> and it was just an hour after it ended. But, yeah, it's uh, it was pretty frustrating. I think Liverpool, I, we, I was really kind of hoping that Liverpool's uh, goalkeeping kind of woes were put behind them because Carius was actually, there's Hunter Harvey, Carius was actually playing really well. Hunter Harvey goes to EA and the O's uh, for the last few months. You know, was playing well, you know. Virgil van Dyke had really kind of shored up the back four. They weren't perfect, but it was better. And then, just there's Otani paper. Just didn't do it. It was no good. Right. Rockets are officially done. 115 to 86. Now, do, do the Rockets have a shot in the uh, in game seven at home? They are at home. There's Andres Jimenez. Let's set those in here. These are just paper. I'll slide these, keep these near me right over here. And those will be obviously be top loaded before they get before they get shipped out. Jay Cohen says, "If is Chris Paul going to play? If he does, they do. I don't know. I think he. I think he's going to try. K 
kind of feel bad for Chris Paul. I feel like he has that sort of that that injury sort of bug that kind of catches him at the most inopportune times. Yeah, I mean, I think, uh, hmm, let's, let's look at some of the box, let's look at the box score here. How did the, how did the Rockets do? I mean, yeah, James Harden did what he, did what he can do. 32 points, seven rebounds, nine assists, almost a triple double, you know, um, but you gotta you gotta get a little more point some more points out of Capella. You gotta get a little bit more out of Ariza. You gotta get a little more out of everybody. A lot of minuses on that plus minus there too. That's not good. It could be interesting. Well, who wins? Uh, what do you think about the? The Celtics Cavs here. So the Cavs going back to Boston. Do you do you go do you try to do you pick against LeBron James in a game seven? I know that the Celtics have been pretty dominant at home. But John G's like, who wants to watch last year's finals? Not even last year's finals, the last three years. If the Warriors and the Cavs see each other again, it'll be the fourth year in a row that they've seen that they've seen each other. Luke says Cavs Warriors again and the Warriors win again. Man, I don't know if I want to see that series a fourth time in a row. Before the conference finals started in basketball, I, I had I had gone with I selected uh, the Rockets versus the Cavs. That might still happen if I'm lucky. We'll find out soon enough. There's Reese Hoskins. I've heard of this guy. This guy's pretty good. Rookie auto, Reese Hoskins for the Phillies. Jason Gay. I, I think you can wake him up now. That's a good one. Or let, you can let him sleep, I guess. It's late out there. It's, Holiday weekend, though. There's Reese Hoskins. Nice. Last spot mojo for Jason Gay and the Phillies as well. Yeah, the autos are kind of early in these... Like sometimes they're they're like late in the packs, sometimes they're early. But I think I saw some orange here, so we have some we have nice low number parallel to look forward to. We got Jose Adalas Garcia out of 499 paper for the Cardinals. Tim Castle with the Redbirds or Cassell. Cassell, I think. <laughs> Tim C. T C. That one. Save those paper Otanis. He is a special. Oh, I pronounced it right the first. It was. It is Castle. There you go. Should have gone with my my first instinct. There's Yohan Mankata out of four ninety nine. Well, hopefully there'll be another reason to call your name again, Tim.
All right. Jay Cohen saying that Houston is 41-9 and nine at home this season. How many of those 41s were without CP3? Oh, I'm mixing up the paper pile and the chrome pile. Come on, Joe. There we go. <laughs> Got it. Goes over there. All right, there's a little bit of, there's the orange. And it's Lazaro Armenteros, 23 out of 25. Nice Jaspi orange parallel going to Nick Sanderson and the Athletics. There you go, nice. Next box. Good luck, everybody. Let's see. Do we have some any any more finals here? Baseball score finals on a Saturday night. Saturday the twenty sixth, Memorial Day weekend. How does everyone like those uh, Memorial Day weekend hats? Those dark green hats. I think I, I think I like the 4th of July ones better. I think I might get myself a, a Dodgers 4th of July cap. I think, from what I understand, I think Major League Baseball uh, had... Uh, had switched there, yeah, Eric Janning's like, kinda ugly, yeah, I wasn't too into it. I think the 4th of July ones look great, though. But uh, I think Major League Baseball in recent years has has done a, um, has done a good job commemorating uh, Memorial Day. I think they had a team kinda talk to some people about the, 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 real, the real background of Memorial Day, which is for, I think it's kind of turned into sort of Veterans Day for Memorial Day, but it's really for the fallen. So, in uh, in combat. So I think the I think Major League Baseball, all of their uh, Memorial Day weekend kind of celebration stuff, has kind of reflected that, which I think is good. Good luck, everybody. Uh, we'll go through baseball scores after this box. All right, good luck, boys and girls. Evan Longoria, who looks weird in a... Uh, Kind of looks weird in a Giants uniform. We've got Mackenzie Gore. Nice prospect for the San Diego Padres. That goes to Brian P. First round, third overall pick. Yeah, you know what? I, that's the exact game that I was watching, EJ, on the, uh, on the television set. The television set? The television set. Uh, was the Rangers game. Um, and I was just like, so I'll save one of those for you. Um, you know, where I was just like, oh, yeah, you know, maybe he wasn't the best model for those hats. But yeah, the fourth the Fourth of July ones. I think I'm gonna I'm gonna pick up one of those once that 
rolls around. Boss Man is convinced, everybody, that that Bartolo Colon is on roids. That he has like one of the best masking agents or something like that. Because he's just like, there's no way a man of that stature and of his age can continue taking the ball every fifth day and being somewhat effective in the major leagues unless he's on roids. I think he's gotten popped for roids before, right? Bartolo Colon. But I feel like he never... He never gets like the hatred that that other guys get. Is it because he's a bigger dude? Well, I, I, you know what? That's that's an idea that I failed to pitch to the boss man, Rich. Perhaps Bartolo Colon is just a cyborg, is just a robot, just like Yarmir Yager, just like Vince Carter, just like Tom Brady's probably a cy cyborg as well. How old's Tom Brady? You know, think about that. Cyborg. That or PEDs. There's Taylor Ward, four ninety nine. If LeBron James beats the Celtics in Boston, then I'm convinced that he is some sort of cyborg. No way that man can play that many minutes at that intensity level and and just not not wear down like like other other mortals. Which brings us back into our classic philosophical discussion about cyborg parts and professional sports. How much of a player has to be human for him to be in the league? Do we not? We haven't seen the autograph yet. Where are you, autograph? It always makes me nervous when it's this late. <laughs> it's like, ah, oh, did Spock short us an autograph? I think it's coming up. There it is. Matt Whiskey Sour for the Yankees. That'll be for Adam Kupperman and the Bronx Bombers. 362 out of 499. Nice refractor autograph for the Yankees. It's kind of ridiculous how deep that Yankees farm system is and and how like relatively speaking how uh, how small their payroll is relatively speaking it's still high but for the Yankees it's kind of low all right ladies and gentlemen you're, you're uh, I forgot to do this from the previous box got sidetracked I got plenty of boxes to go. May 26, 2018, your scores for tonight. The Giants edged out the Cubs in Chicago 5-4. The Angels pounded on the Yankees 11 to They went 11-4 in New York, in the Bronx. Uh, the Brew Crew destroying the Mets in Milwaukee 17-6. Nationals beat the Marlins 4-1. White Sox in Detroit beating the Tigers 8-4. Tampa Bay Rays beating the... Baltimore Orioles 5 to 1 in Tampa Bay in extra innings in bonus baseball. The Rangers edged out the Royals 4 to 3 in Texas. Looks like uh Oh, looks like there was a no hit bid for Aaron Nola, huh? He's he's been pitching great. Uh Phillies won uh 2 1 over the Blue Jays in Philadelphia. Cardinals beat the Pirates 4 to 1 in Pittsburgh. In, uh, in Oakland, the A's shut out the Diamondbacks 3-0. And the Red Sox beat the Braves 8-6. Games in progress. Bottom of the ninth, Cleveland is holding on to... Or top of the ninth, sorry. Cleveland's holding on to an 8-6 lead against the Astros. Top of the eighth, Reds leading the Rockies 4-6. Bottom of the fifth, Dodgers leading the... Uh, Padres in LA 5-3. And the top of the sixth... The Twins have scored a run, one run, one nothing over the Mariners in Seattle.
and I have the Dodgers and the Twins in this game. And tonight, one unit. Maybe more. I don't know. I'm doing a lot better in it. We talk a little wagering here, ladies and gentlemen, just for entertainment purposes only, and especially over the last handful of months, just because, well, it's going to be legal. It is legal now. The, the law was, the ban was struck down by the United States Supreme Court using the Tenth Amendment, I believe, if everyone remembers their Tenth Amendment, right? Everyone remembers the Tenth Amendment. Uh, it's a state's rights issue, I think, is pretty much what it turned out to be, is the legal argument. Anyway, I think Delaware is going to be among the first non-Nevada states to offer uh, sports wagering, a sports book. New Jersey won't be too far behind. And then, depends on where you live, your state may or may not have that access there. So it'll be interesting to see uh, how that plays out over the next handful of years. I think it might take California a little while. Too many regulations here. It takes us a while to do things. Fun like that. No fun state. Like the no fun league. Um, but I've been doing a lot better in regular season. I did okay regular season basketball. Putting a few few little pennies here and there. But terrible in the playoffs. There's the Reds shed long. Shed long going to Jeremy Merle and the Reds. There you go, Jeremy. Reds have some, some solid prospects coming up the ranks. Uh, regular season baseball, I'm doing a lot better in regular season baseball. First month, I was just doing terrible, but started to catch up. Yeah, I'm the new ace. It's aces high with Ace Rothstein. That's what I'm going to be. Greg Dykeman out of 499. Diekman? Deichman? Deichman? I don't know. He's just meat until he makes it to the bigs. How about that? Yeah. I wish I was like Ace Rothstein. You know, uh, professional, if you're a professional uh, sports gambler, the, oh, this is nice. Look at this. Blue Jays, Atomic, Vlad Guerrero. Those aren't numbered, but they look nice. I think it's one per box. But for a successful sports gambler, I think you have to... Um, I think you have to win like 52. It's something very narrow. The difference between a pro and just a square like me is like pros will win like 52% of their their wagers or whatever. Which is kind of crazy. And and so I've been sprinkling some pennies on a lot of games over the last handful of months. Uh it's hard. <laughs> I'm close to 50% actually, but it's hard. Yeah, I mean, the margin is super, yeah, exactly, Jay Cohen. the margin is super small. Like, like if I look at, um, I've only really been tracking baseball just cause I'm, I'm more, I'm a big baseball fan. I'll probably track football too. I think I do a lot better at football than when I, if I do it consistently, which we'll find out this season. Cause that's, I've always done it, but not consistently. But baseball, I am at like, 48% or something like that. This month, I think, this month, I think I'm 50-50. Maybe after tonight, I'll be 50-50. But it's, the margin is super small. Yeah, it's not, it's, you know, everyone's like all excited about sports wagering, but it's just like, well, listen, A, it's entertainment, you know what I mean? So don't get too excited. B, just accept that you're probably going to lose most of the time. Out of 75, I'm just happy that I can sometimes break even, or at least just, it's just entertainment cost to me. You know, so if, if I can have a little fun and, you know, and maybe keep an eye on a game that I probably wouldn't really care about. Nice Kershaw, 22 jersey number, at 25. Dodger Joe Mojo for Jason Gay and the Dodgers. Nice. He's coming back off the DL really soon. Dodgers will need that. Justin Turner back, Clayton Kershaw back. That'll be nice. But yeah, margins are really small, really difficult. But I'm just happy that I'm I'm not a I'm like a halfway decent wager or -er. 
it's a grind though. I, th I think most of it is just, a lot of times it's just, uh, especially with baseball and regular season basketball, a lot of times it's, um, you just gotta bet a lot just to get the, just to get a nice even margin. Because you can't just do it a handful of times. You gotta, you gotta kind of do it frequently. Football is a lot easier, I realize, just because it's only just like, what, eight games a week or something like that, or sixteen games a week maybe. After the bye weeks and everything, it's just, it's not very much. All right. Yeah, Stripling did, Ross Stripling did pitch well last night for the Dodgers. I think they, last season, they really just had him only as like a, as a relief pitcher. But I think, um, I think this off season and this spring training, they stretched him out to be a long reliever or possible starter. So I think he's more equipped for that than he was last season. So he's been filling in pretty well. I mean... With Kershaw's injury, with Kenton Rue's injury, with with Clayton Kershaw's injury, Rich Hill can't stay healthy. Um, I think he's he's definitely been able to fill in just nicely, along with Walker Bueller, another big name in this product that Jason should, Jason Gay should be looking out for for the Dodgers. I don't know what it is with with Rich Hill, Rich Hill, uh, and his uh, his I don't know which finger it is, but the, like fingernail blister issues and stuff like that has been a real struggle for him which is kind of frustrating because when he's on dude can do dude can hurl he's a good hurler but it's been a little frustrating this season for him opinions on charlie steiner taking over vin's booth has there been talk about that I like Charlie Steiner. Charlie Steiner's okay. He did, him and Rick Monday do a great job on the radio side of things. But I like the I like Joe Davis and uh, and Oral Hershiser doing TV. Joe Davis is pretty pretty polished. And I think he doesn't do he doesn't try too much. And he's a good match with with uh, with Oral Hershiser. It's a pretty good TV TV tandem. And I think Charlie and Rick do a great job just for radio. All right. There's Walker Bueller. Bobby Bradley out of 250. Franklin Perez, Bowman Trending, hashtag Bowman Trending out of 150. And as for the Tigers, and that'll be for Daniel Patera. Can we get some refractors? Yes. I mean, any ref any parallel that comes out, any chrome parallel that comes out or paper parallel that comes out will be shipped. Domingo Acevedo at a four ninety nine. Oh, is he doing the game on TV? He's usually not the TV guy. It's not a rotation. Oh, that's pretty cool. He's not. It's not a rotation. I don't know, but maybe it just could be. I don't know. I don't know what it could be actually. Oh, there's Jose Adalas Garcia. That's a nice one. Tim Castle. 
Nailed it. With that one, and he has got the Redbirds. There you go. Nice. Oh, is that the one you were looking for, TC? Nice. Excellent. Good. Good to hear. I always forget that Joey Gallo grew up with Bryce Harper. You guys know that? And like, and not like, not like Bryce Harper and Chris Bryant, where they kind of grew up on opposite sides of the city in Vegas or whatever, um, or maybe they're a year or two apart. But um, but no, Joey Gallo actually played like Little League with Bryce Harper. They they grew up as buddies. I, I I don't know. Maybe I I knew that and I just blanked on it. But it always surprises me. I was like, oh yeah, that's right. Next box. I think I heard a story on like the ESPN Baseball Tonight podcast, which is pretty great. Buster Only hosts it. And um, and he and he, I think they were interviewing Joey Gallo. Joey Gallo had a great story about when him and Bryce Harper were kids. I think they were both like nine or ten years old or something like that, and. And apparently Bryce Harper was pitching, but nobody wanted to catch Bryce Harper because, <laughs> believe it or not, Bryce Harper was kind of a brat. And uh, and every time, oh, did I miss a purple Garcia? He was kind of a brat at the time, and um, I don't think so. And he had, and, and I think Bryce Harper had struck out like the... Uh, I don't know, if I miss a parallel, the shipping team usually catches it. It'll go out to you. Um, anyhow, Bryce Harper was being a brat because he had struck out when he was like 9 or 10 years old. And he and, he, and nobody wanted to catch Bryce Harper because he could throw hard, you know. But he was just on the mound. He, was like, he wasn't even looking at the plate and he was just chucking the ball in there. And, and Joey Gallo said, I started crying and, and, and I didn't want to catch him either. And... You know, I ran to my mom, and, and my mom and Bryce Harper's mom were just kind of like trying to comfort me and got some ice cream, blah, blah, blah. So I thought that was a funny, funny little story. It's weird, weird to think of those, of, of all these ball players, just because it's, I mean, there's only a small percentage of ball players that, be, that go into the majors, but to have like, Two on the same minor league team, or the minor league on the same uh, same little league team. It's pretty crazy. All Where does Bryce Harper go, ladies and gentlemen? Does he stay in? I, I he might stay in Washington, right? It's possible. Could the Nationals afford to let him go? All 
All right, good luck, everybody. Here we go. Next box. Drift saying Otani incoming, he says. He's number one. He's crushing in the minors. I was telling everybody that I think he gets called up. I think he gets called up as soon as they can trade Josh Donaldson to somebody. If they can trade Josh Donaldson. Ooh, nice Brendan McKay. Gold Shimmer Brendan McKay autograph for Alex Lindsay and the Tampa Bay Rays. The American Otani. <laughs> Japanese Babe Ruth, American Japanese Otani. Babe Ruth. <laughs> the next Babe Ruth. 45 out of 50. He's also a two-way player. I don't know if they're actually going to let him keep doing two-way, keep doing first base and, and pitching, though. We'll see. That'll be interesting, but a very nice hit. They might actually. I th they they drafted him as a two way player, as opposed to uh, as opposed to Hunter Green, who I think Hunter Green for the Reds. I think they drafted him as a pitcher, like specifically, and they they're like because he could have played he can play like shortstop, but I think they said yeah we're we want you to be a pitcher. But I think with Brandon McKay, I think he was specifically drafted with the intent of. Letting him be a two-way player. Ian Anderson, 73 out of 125. You're, what, fifth, third overall pick in 2016? Another great pitcher coming up. The Braves ranks. That'll be for D-Mac. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, Lee's confirming that, yeah, Hunter Green is a two-way player, but... They, they made him a pitcher only. I think I was reading somewhere, Lee and everybody, that Hunter Green, if he decided to to only go as a position player, like an infielder, like he would have still been drafted. I think they said he, he would have still been drafted in the first round. Like that's how good he was. Like he'd still be drafted like late first round, middle first round. As a pitcher, he projected a high first round, which he did go... So I thought that was pretty crazy. Pretty talented guy. There's Tyler Stevenson, speaking of the Reds. 5 out of 25, orange paper. Jaspi orange parallel going to Jeremy Marlin and the Reds. Cal Quantrill out of 499 for the Friars. That goes to Brian P and the Padres. Yeah, these I think they're they're well, first of all, they're hobby exclusive, right? The oranges, I think, Lee. But we 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 have been seeing a lot of oranges. I think I feel like more than more than usual in these cases. There's Brandon Crawford out of 499 for Tim Castle and the Giants. Oppo Joe Mojo. Yeah, hobby exclusive for the orange. All right. Next ball, we are halfway through the break, folks. We are halfway through the break, and I think I time-wise I'm on track. So there's this should there should be another uh, another 45 minutes. So I think we are on track time-wise. It's kind of a slog, but I'm glad that you guys are sticking with me here. Padres tied it at five. Come on, Dodgers. Yeah, this has been a great case. All right. 
So officially at the halfway mark. Good luck, everybody. Second half coming up. Still, still plenty of boxes to go, everybody. Oh man, and the, and the twins are down too. All right, Arthur, feel better, man. Um, I'm not back until Wednesday, so I'll see you then. There may be a substitute breaker on Tuesday, folks. So I don't know. Keep keep an eye out on the uh, on the stream. Subscribe, notification, blah blah blah. Hit the bell. <laughs> right? That's 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 what all the popular YouTubers say. Be part of the bell, be part of the notification squad. Don't do that, just, just check it. Just copy the link. Maybe a Nick Jaspi sighting, Rich? When was the last time you saw him? Ages, right? He's been busy. Boss man sighting, maybe? Yeah, we should have uh, we should have, we should have Nick, Nick do some of these Bowman baseball breaks. All right. All right, second half. Good luck, everyone. Thanks for getting into it. And more orange. That's Tyler Maley for the Reds. 13 out of 25. A nice jaspy orange for Jeremy Merle and the Reds. Very nice. VN. Very nice, as the kids say. Here's an Otani paper. Tyler Maley, um, already getting regular starts in the big leagues. He's been, he's been doing okay, I think, right? Tyler Maley, decent. And some blue paper, Miggy, Miguel Cabrera out of 150. That'll be for the Tigers, that goes to Daniel Patera. There's Hunter Green, we were just talking about him. Vlad Guerrero, Chrome. Lee looking for parallels of that guy. Right. Well, there's no autos of him, right? Of Vlad Guerrero, not in this set. I think. I think maybe. I think maybe I heard rumblings that. That Tops would probably prefer for Vlad Guerrero not to, come up this season, so they can put him in next year's product. Man, think about that. That'd be a great. We had. Aaron Judge and Bellinger last year. Right, mostly Aaron Judge, but Aaron Judge last year. This year is the Otani. Is the Otani hype this year? Plus some a handful of other guys, but mostly Otani hype this year. And then, um, and then probably Vlad Jr. Vlad Jr. and like Bo Bichette might come up next year, and that'll be. That'll be the, the, the big names in the hobby next year, especially Vlad Guerrero Jr. No. All right. Blue Shimmer, Franklin Colomb. 
004 out of 150. Right, and Acuna this year too. Ozzy Albias too, I think is doing decently secondary market-wise, hobby-wise. I'd also love for uh, Lee saying I'd also love for him to come up next season so the guy in your league doesn't keep Vlad Jr. Oh yeah, I got it. My, I'm having a terrible fantasy baseball season. Ops, absolutely awful, horrendous. It's gonna be fire sale time in a few weeks. Maybe, uh, maybe try to see if I could get Vlad Guerrero Jr. for someone as a keeper for next year. All right, next box. Oh, you've got a good year going? Man, the last couple of years for me has been pretty rough. I'm in a tough league. I guess all the leagues, fancy is always tough. Robert is for how many teams are in your league, Robert? It's always tough. If, if, if small small leagues are a challenge, because you're just like, man, what what stud do you start? Because your draft will always go well, but then it's just a matter of, of of who's hot, who's not, which stud do you start or not start? That's a challenge. I'm in a big league, and that's another challenge because it's like I'm in a 16 team keeper league, and that's difficult because then you're you're just having to dig deep. And uh, no, Strowman went on the DL by the time I was trying to swing a deal. And so, ride or die with Strowman, basically. Hopefully, that shoulder issue was the only thing. Uh, I do I do Roto, Eric. I think Roto always works nicely for me for baseball because I think head-to-head -head doesn't work as nicely, I think, for me. That, that like, football is perfect for head-to-head. -head. I don't know. Yeah, it was that it was that shoulder issue, Lee. That's what it was. And hopefully, I, I can at least extract some kind of value from him. You know, when he comes back from the DL. There was also a, a report where I saw, and I think I we, I think we were chatting about this, um, where he wasn't using like his cut fastball, which was like an effective pitch for him last year, but some, for whatever reason abandoned it this year. I don't know, maybe it caused a little too much strain on the shoulder, some orange shimmer down there. Fantasy football is a little, yeah, Robert Rohr is saying fantasy football, I, I prefer fantasy football. It's, uh, it's easier to, uh, it's easier to manage fantasy football. It doesn't take as much time. All right. Wait, whose who's stat line is that, Regicidal? 18 for 34, 14 runs, 3 home runs, 10 RBIs, 0 stolen bases, 605 on base percentage. Or is that what or is that what people were hitting off of Strowman? <laughs> Leody Tavares at a one fifty atomic. For the Rangers, he's number fifty one on the Bowman Scouts top one hundred. Daniel Patera with the Texas Rangers. Paper Otani, all those add up, Adam. Yeah, Mike Trout, Mike Trout had a monster game. Mike Trout is having a monster season, I feel like, right?
Like I, th I thought that that Otani would have a chance at. There's Nick Gordon. Oh, I thought Otani would have a chance at the uh, AL MVP, but I mean, I'm sure he's protecting Trout in that lineup. But the way he, uh, the way he, the Mike Trout has been playing, man, which I'm sure some credit has to go to Otani in the lineup as well. But but the way Trout is hitting, it's going to be hard for for Otani to sneak in with that. Nick Jaspi has a very clever. Uh, we, were, we were discussing this before the season, and while Otani was tanking in the pre or in the not tanking but just playing terribly in the uh, in the spring, his AL MVP odds were like thirty three to one or something like that, maybe even higher. It was like plus three thousand, I think. It was a lot. That's not thirty. That's like three hundred to one, I think. Something like that. Anyhow, I can't convert that in my head right now. I'm too too tired from the week. But point is, Nick Jaspi put a very clever bet on that. And then, um, and then a week, two weeks later, two weeks after that, after Otani had like an amazing week and a half or two weeks to start the season, his AL MVP odds dropped to minus numbers. So it wasn't like dog numbers anymore. <laughs> it's crazy. But I don't know. Yeah, with the way Mo Mookie bets too, you're right. See a maniac. Yeah, um, you're right about Mookie bets too. Now, Mike Trout, Mookie bets are your top two AL MVP candidates because they're, they're, just, they're just balling out. But I think a lot, a lot of times with, and again, at entertainment purposes only. There's Joey Wentz, Carson's brother. I don't know if it's Carson's brother. Uh, the the name of the game, I think, a lot of times in sports wagering is you're oftentimes being a contrarian, and a lot of times it's really finding. This is how I, this is why I enjoy it. It's finding value. Who is undervalued? Who is overvalued? And I think trying to find those discrepancies will kind of help make a good wager. All right, let's see what this orange shimmer is. Sean Murphy, 12 out of 25 for the Oakland A's. Nick Sanderson with the orange shimmy shim. We got Evan White to 499. That's that. Four more boxes to go. We're getting there, folks. We're getting there. I don't know. What is... Let me drop the schedule again for people who are just tuning in. Wow. So Trout had this Mariners, by the way. That goes to Daniel Patera. So Trout had five hits and 11 total bases. Braves auto going to D-Mac. It's insanity. balancing act right there. I got nervous. Just sit down over here. All right. When did when did Matt Souser end up Souser Souser? When when did he when did he uh, end up with the Padres? I do not remember this deal at all. I thought he was a he was a cub, wasn't he?
Welcome to welcome to your uh, your Matt Scoozer Suzer update. We're the we're the, we're the only uh, sports program out there in the world that'll give you nonstop, up to the minute Matt Suzer news, boys and girls, which is what the people want. I think that moves the needle. That's 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 a ratings getter. That that that's a that's that's gonna go virus. It's gonna crank up the view count. If I clickbait it, and it's it's pronounced Caesar. Why doesn't he spell it like that? <laughs> There's definitely S and a Z. That says Suze to me. And Czar 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 is spelled. C Z A R. And he spells it C Z U R, so Zar turns into Zur. Suzer. Caesar. That is incorrect. <laughs> it's not right. Just making it hard for everybody. I need like a I need like a you know what I need? I wonder if I could get this. I need to get a oh, there's Daniel Johnson. There he is. Nationals, Andrew K. I need to get a uh, media guide from every one of these Major League Baseball teams. Hockey teams, too, I guess. Uh, just for all the pronunciations. All the broadcasters get them. I'm kind of a broadcaster. I feel like I could get one of those, right? Just want to deliver that extra, that extra bit of knowledge for the people that break with us. There's Eloy Jimenez. 23 out of 50. Gold paper. That card is gold for the White Sox. That goes to D, uh, David Farling. There we go. Will the Cubs regret this trade? I think they might. The, the Cubs, in a very rare north side, south side trade, if you guys remember, Eloy Jimenez was dealt to the White Sox for uh, Jose Quintana. What's on TNT now? Oh man! All the basketball post game stuff is over. Can't switch to the baseball television. Tune to the MLB network. It's not gonna do it. James Caprillion, he came over from the Yankees in the Sonny Gray deal. Let's see how that turns out. That goes to the A's. That's for Nick Sanderson. Sean Murphy Atomic for the A's. This ominous music lets me know this is a, a scary show. Oh, I, I had the twins. If that's gonna happen anymore. Jojo Romero out of four ninety nine for the Phillies. Jason Gay with the Phillies. Otani. That Otani paper base always follows the same guy, I think, right? Whoever that was. It's too too late to turn back now. It's too late to turn back now. I believe I believe I believe I believe I believe. 
All right. Let's make myself a little extra room here. Three boxes to go, ladies and gentlemen. We are almost there. Almost there. Stay on target. Who saw the Han Solo movie? I haven't. I'll see it. No spoilers. I know what happens. He gets the Millennium Falcon. <laughs> he makes the Kessel run in X number of parsecs. He dumps his load of spice at the side of an Imperial cruiser. Job of the Hutt gets pissed. Puts a bounty on his head. I, blah, blah, blah. Old, old news. I know what happens. Dodgers? Give me up. Who just. Wait, I, I just moved switch windows for a second and then they give up a run? To who? To how? Joseph Jose Perella, Cincinnati Reds cast off, and then Matt Scoozer. I'm going to call him. Keep calling him Scoozer scores. No, he doesn't deserve my. The, the respect to call him. I'm not putting any respect on his name. Yeah. Until it becomes Harrison Ford. A surprise appearance. Oh, okay. Well, maybe. I guess I'll have to see it. I'm going to see it anyway. And I'm sure there's I'm sure there's a there's a, a, a cute droid in the movie. I feel like I could write it. Huh. Should I abandon this breaking career and uh, and start writing uh, Star Wars fanfic? I actually want to know how how, uh, how it would actually be cool to write the like some Star Wars books. I feel like there's a nice easy formula I could follow. It's a big world, big universe, a lot of stories to mine. I actually did have a, a Star Wars novel idea, a novel novel idea, where I was going to have a lot of ideas, but uh, I need to execute some of these ideas, um, where uh, I would write a story about how, I think, about how uh, some Imperial officers were going to try to assassinate the Emperor. In a in a Valkyrie, you guys remember Operation Valkyrie in a in a Valkyrie style book. There's Luis Garcia, Blue Chrome, thirty nine out of one fifty. Operation Valkyrie, of course, was the attempt by Nazi officers to assassinate Hitler. Didn't work. That's my idea. Hopefully no one's done it. <laughs> There's so many books. A book on how, yeah, the, so Otani almost always follows Rugnet Odor. If he, if he is there, it'll follow Rugnet Odor. You could play a game with someone, try to, like a bar game, if you're opening packs at a bar, you see Rugnet Odor, it's like, I'll bet Otani Paper is going to come after that Rugnet Odor. I'll bet you 10 bucks, bet you a beer. A book on how they messed up Star Wars, Rich. Yeah. I've, I don't know. That Last Jedi was, was kind of disappointing. Like, sometimes there's some days where I'm just like, yeah, it was different. It was cool. And then some days I'm just like, that was, it was just terrible go back and forth on that but somewhat disappointing is it? I think I read an article about the last Jedi and how they how someone was saying how they were saying well 
they made it too much like a Marvel movie. You know what I mean? And I was, and, and I, I thought that was like a perfect like description. You know, I was like, oh yeah, it's kind of like a, it's kind of like a, 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 you know, a Marvel movie. And so that's why it never didn't feel right. Little too much, little too many Marvely Marvel writer kind of jokes. I don't mind the jokes. I don't mind jokes. We have jokes. There are a lot of cheesy jokes in Star Wars, but it didn't. It didn't feel like Star Wars jokes. I guess the pacing was a little weird. I don't know. All right. Your third to last autograph is Michael Mercado for the Rays. Alex Lindsay with the Rays. Rex says they need to make a Trek Wars combo movie. Sounds terrible. <laughs> it's like as bad as like when like when they do like crossovers. You know, they do like crossovers with shows like oh, Family Guy's on The Simpsons. Mike Soroka out of four ninety nine. Was Last Jedi two PC? Oh, I've heard people say it. I didn't really I didn't really get that feeling to it. Yeah, and Rich Rich saying you don't kill Luke. Well I think you could, but I I agree with Globug, not like the way they did it in The Last Jedi. I think that would be a good plot device to move to move this story forward, I think you could kill Luke as if he's like a force ghost or, 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 or die, you know, I don't know. It, there, there could be a better way to do it. I don't mind that they killed him off. And I think I, cause I think it advances the narrative, puts a, puts the, you know, puts the story moving forward on the shoulders of like Ray and, and, and I like that. It's fine. But but yeah, the way they did it, I don't know, just, was he there? He was not there, you know, kind of does like this goofy matrixy kind of thing, which was too, which was too obvious, I think. I didn't like that play. <laughs> Worf and Chewbacca, C-3PO with Data, it would work, says Rex. Maybe as a Christmas special. Yeah, the timing was a little weird too. They all made it seem like this all happened in like three days. That felt a little weird. I don't know. There are a lot of fanboys who are just like, oh, well, the time and the, the gravity and the gas fuel left in the... Like, oh, come on, stop. It just wasn't good. There were some beautiful moments in that movie, though. That I, I think, I think when uh, who was the, what's the why, why am I blanking on her name? She was in Jurassic Park. She's a pretty good actress, actually. And she flies the thing through the through the Snoke's big. You know, I thought that moment was. There was like a lot of moments that were great in that movie. I thought the the fight scene between the uh, between the the. Snoke's red guards that were that I thought that fight sequence was really great. Not a lot of special effects. I like that. You know, Laura Dern. Yeah, I like Laura Dern. Um, but well, I think they should have killed Snoke too. But you gotta have you gotta have a, a certain reason why. You know, there 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 could have been a better narrative for that. Oh yeah, listen. That's right, Glowbug. You know who liked it? Low Glowbug's like, you know who liked it a lot? 12 to 15 year old girls. Because he has daughters. He's like, my daughters loved it because of Ray. No, I, I have no problem with that. Ray's great. I think she's a great character. But I, I, I just think that because of the way they did Last Jedi, I think it it kind of neutered a lot of the Ray storyline, which I don't I think they could have made a lot better. Uh, I just think that I don't know, I feel like it was it was it was half baked. 
You know, I, I feel like they could have made her character better. Well, that's what I'm saying. I think Last Jedi really really made her like a Mary Sue, right? Like, I, I, I feel like... I feel like The Force Awakens kind of kind of built up that thing where it's like, oh, okay, I can see the girl power thing. I'm okay with that. Like, that's fine. You know, they could re they could keep going with that storyline. But then Last Jedi was just like, oh, now she's just back to being whiny and weak and, you know, like, I don't know. Now, I get that it's a trilogy, so maybe the third movie is going to wrap all that together nicely, but... I don't know. You still have to make Last Jedi a good standalone movie too. Empire Strikes Back was a good standalone movie, and then still fit in the context of of the entire saga. Even Attack of the Clones. God, you know that that's a thing. Last Jedi made me th actually think: Did I actually do I actually like some of the prequels better than Last Jedi? Because I, I mean, as bad as the prequels were. At least there was like a Star Warsy, uh, a Star Warsy charm to it. I mean, it gave you the lightsaber battles. It gave you what the people want, like a like a action movie. You know what I mean? Uh, it gave you it gave you that sort of action movie sort of vibe. And even though it wasn't as good as the original, nothing will be as good as the original original trilogy. But at least they were kind of entertaining. As bad as they were, at least the prequels were kind of entertaining. Joey Wentz, another Joey Wentz for the Braves. DMAC, that's our second to last auto. We're still at two, Joe P. Joe P wanted an Otani autograph count. Still at two, and that two was from the same case many, many, many cases ago and many weeks ago. So. Yeah, we talk about a lot of things here, Teach. <laughs> he's, he's watching Phantom Menace right now. Right, yeah, the prequels diff definitely fit the narrative of the original trilogy. I mean, obviously, because they already had a story built for them, so they were leading up to that. I understand the challenges of, like, creating a completely new storyline post-Star Wars. There's so much history built into the original trilogy that, yeah, you can, you can go backward and kind of reverse engineer, reverse engineer it and then make a good prequel story because it'll fit that narrative, you know? But... And I understand that it's difficult to make a brand new trilogy with brand new characters and not everyone's going to like it, but but even though The Force Awakens was a little safe, even though The Force Awakens was a little safe, it was still good. I think it was a nice bridge to, to the next generation of Star Wars. <laughs> right, Jose says, no solo spoiler alerts. <laughs> Drift is like he dies. Now there's... I'll tell you what happens in Solo, Jose. He gets the Millennium Falcon. He meets Lando Cal Calrissian and wins the w Millennium Falcon in a game of chance. There's Ahmed Rosario to 250. Boom, there you go. And then he abandons his... his his, uh, he abandons his uh, cargo of spice that he was running for Jabba the Hutt. But did make the Kessel run in 12 parsecs, which is pretty short. Yeah, it takes, uh, takes a lot of guts to, to shorten up that length right there. Khalil Lee out of 150. Oh yeah, of course it's Dune, yeah. Luke has ripped off all that stuff. Yeah, Spice. It's like, uh, I think, what's the equivalent of Spice? I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure it's like cocaine, right? I think, I think Spice is Coke. Pretty sure it is. All right, Talent Pipeline. You've got a great Talent Pipeline. 10 out of 25. The Tribe, Indians, that goes to Daniel Patera, another orange. Yeah, Star Wars is not hogwash. It is life. 
Now, Joe, Joe P is uh, Joe P is a Walking Dead guy. He likes that sort of stuff. But he likes Walking Dead. No fairy tale movies. No science fiction for Joe P. He's more he's more the Walking Dead kind of genre, right, Joe? And, and I think stuff like that. Different strokes for different folks. It's all right. Everyone's got their own thing. Bobby Bradley also going to the tribe. Also for Daniel Patera. Yeah, orange for days. Hunter Green. And the last box coming up. Joe P, aren't you a aren't you a brony as well? <laughs> aren't you a, aren't you a brony as well? My Little Pony, Friendship Forever. Team Brony. Joe P, do you know what a brony is? Does everyone everyone knows what a brony is, right? Everyone should know this by now. It's very odd. Bob's Burgers, I think, did a really good satire of the whole brony thing. All right, Mar Mario is saying, Otani's oh, in here. No, it's not just it not it's not just a bro who watches My Little Pony. It is oh, it's so much more than that, Drift. Look it up. Google it. Google images. It's a thing. It's a thing. Yeah, watching My Little Pony is just way too loose. I, you know, anyone can end up accidentally stumbling upon, you know, a My Little Pony and seeing what it's all about, right? Uh, Brony. It's like an actual, it's a whole world. I think they, they, well, they collect the, they collect the ponies, I think, the toys, which, which actually are pretty valuable, I think. They collect that, but then I think they also, uh, they dress up like their favorite My Little Pony character. And it's not like old school My Little Pony, it's like the new cartoon, the new animated series of My Little Pony that came out maybe like 10 years ago. Uh, I know Glo Brody's now in your in your search. Ah, Joe P, you searched it. Wifey is gonna be like, Joe, what are you doing? Wifey is gonna have questions for you. Mrs. Joe P is gonna have questions for Joe tomorrow. Yeah, they're kind of weird. Yeah, it's kind of weird. They dress up like they dress up like their favorite My Little Pony character. I, and I actually don't think it has anything to do, uh, I actually don't think that it has anything to do with sexuality either. If you're sitting there going, oh, they must be, you know, it's not, I don't think it's, I, it's not that either. They just like it and want to dress up like my little pony character. Wait, what, am I, what am I leaving out? Glowbug says I'm still way short of it. Oh yeah, of course. Well, at least that's what they claim, Joe uh, Globuck. <laughs> but it's, it's like it's adult males, basically, or college college males or something like that. Globuck, how? <laughs> I'm blowing people's minds right now. Yeah, this is what you get at Jaspie's Hobbyland. You get weird pop culture stuff. You get sports talk. You get big hate. You get big hits. You know. Oh, well, I don't know, Joe. P. I, I, I don't know, Glowbug. Uh, Glowbug, how would you feel if 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 one of your daughters was dating a brony? Lovug would not be happy. Who would you rather have your daughter's what what undesirable male would you rather have your daughter date, Glowbug? Your teenage daughter's date other than a other than a let's see how far this goes. Other than a brony, Glowbug. A guy that's an older guy maybe? Maybe a guy that drives a motorcycle? Cigarette smoker. Matt Sauer. 
Whiskey Sour is your last autograph, ladies and gentlemen. Yankees, Adam Cupper with that one. Arotani count still holding at two. Anything else is a step up? Maybe maybe a guy that spent some time in juvie. Maybe has a leather jacket where it has tattoos. 17 years old. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm like I'm like describing like a 1950s like bad guy. <laughs> like a like a 1950s bad boy. Cigarettes, motorcycle, leather jacket, tattoos. Cigarettes rolled up in his white t-shirt. I know, Joe P. Hey, this is the kind of entertainment that we provide. You've learned something new. Consider it knowledge, Joe P. I'm just helping you guys out. I think Globo would be okay if his teenage daughters dated the Fonz. Not the Fonz now. That'd be weird. But just like, yeah, I know. It's a thing, Joe P. I know. This is just, this is the world. This is the world in which we live. Hey, it's 2018. I, I you know, I'm, I don't begrudge, uh, I don't begrudge another person what they do, what their hobby is. We like this stuff. You know, so other guys like other stuff. <laughs> There's Justice Sheffield. That's Jordan's brother out of 499. No, 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 no. <laughs> Let's make that clear. This is not me doing My Little Pony cosplay. No, we were just discussing bronies, Eric Jennings. Blowing people's minds. <laughs> Joe, P, Joe P's got brony in his Google. And he might get some questions from, from the wifey. Hey, I like nothing. There's nothing wrong with Legos, Drift. What are you talking about? Oh, man. Boombox is saying spend the weekend cosplaying at My Little Pony or spend the weekend as a juggalo at a juggalos festival. Oh, I, <laughs> I don't know what I would. Maybe I'd probably lean juggalo. Probably lean juggalo. Colby Allard out of 250. Stephen K says, if I ever see a brony, you will punch. One wonders why Stephen K would ever be in a situation where he would see a brony. <laughs> teasing, teasing Stephen K. Christian Pash Atomic. And we're done, folks. Thank you. We made it. We made it just before the brony talk got too crazy. No one's going to watch an hour and a half of this video anyway, so they'll never know. Thanks, everybody. Joe for jazbeeshobbyland.com. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>